I've been playing Albert Odyssey Legend of Eldeen because you have no time to game. <laughs> Welcome to the next episode of the When the Credits Roll, a series in which I only review a game once I've seen the credits roll, so you can have a little faith in what I'm talking about. First up, the basics. Albert Odyssey, Legend of Eldeen, or just Albert Odyssey, was released in August 96 in Japan and July 97 in North America. Never actually saw an EU release. It was developed by Sunsoft and working design to manage the translation. And it's only on Sega Saturn. It took me roughly 25 hours to complete, but this was using an emulator with a speed up function. And believe me, even if this messes with the sound, it's worth it. There are some loading time issues. Anyway, Albert Odyssey is a traditional turn-based JRPG released in the ye old times on the 2D powerhouse that is the Saturn. And using said power, uh, quite a spectacle visually for a 96 title. The story sees us reprising the role of Pike, a human, due to un unfortunate circumstances involving a goblin attack on his village when he was a baby, has been raised among the winged people called Harpies, and even gaining an adopted sister. But once again, fate turns on Pike, and an evil empire attacks, turning his sister to stone, and only the power of a magical blade Pike carries, which he received from his parents, before they died, prevents him from having the same fate. So off he goes into the world to free his sister, and eventually, as any good JRPG, possibly he's going to save the world. Pike acquires a few buddies along the way, which are Eka, a singer that Pike meets, who due to certain circumstances, decides to join him. She's a bit of an interesting character, and takes on the role of like Pike's love interest, but she's quite a headstrong person as well. We get Leos, the daughter of a great priest that they thought might be able to save Pike's sister uh, from the curse. But instead, because she's not strong enough to actually turn the curse around, she joins up with them to help find a different solution. Then we get Grizz, a dragon man that joins the party to pay off the debt for the party saving his people. Uh, he's a very simple character. He's just the heavy hitter, and that kind of comes across in his personality as well. Then we get Amon, a proud and arrogant birdman that joins to help pay back stopping his people from going to war. Um, he thinks his people are stupid and should be helping the party, so because he's the best of them, he joins up. Of course, right? it's mostly saving the world is him, of course. And finally we get Kia, an apprentice mage of another plot relevant character that replaces one of the others in the group further in the story. Uh, to say she's gung ho is a bit of an understatement and she basically has zero fear. <laughs> in all, the story is quite simple. It's a simple save the world plot line that we've seen a hundred times before, but I don't know if it was the original works or the working design's unique take on translations, but the story has a lot of character and the expressiveness of the sprites really helps as well. So it makes for quite a fun adventure overall. Gameplay. This game is about as traditional as it gets, so I won't need long to talk about it. Basically, outside the battle, you have your basic towns and world map with what you'd expect in regards to shops, like item, weapons, inns, and characters you can talk to to get random weird snippets, and some of them are pretty weird. The dungeons are mostly simple mazes, until the very last couple in which they had teleport pads and such to make navigation a bit more complicated. And the characters themselves are your basic stats that you'd expect from most games and can be equipped with a variety of character specific weapons, armors and accessory. They also all learn set spells and abilities as they level with the human characters gaining spells that use MP and the non-human characters just having special power that doesn't consume MP. Um, yeah, it's all very, very traditional, nothing you wouldn't expect, nothing outside the norms. Um, the only thing that to mention is some of the items were a bit odd and could have done with better descriptions. Battles are of the random nature, so you, this is a random encounters, just so you're aware. And they're a classic turn-based, with your guys lining up on one side of the screen, 
and the enemies on the other and taking it in turns on some abstract speed system as to who goes next as no turn order there is no turn order showing as it's an old beast the characters can use the basic attacks magic defend items or run away and can be inflicted with various status effects so yeah it pretty much plays what you think of traditional turn-based jrpg would play like with zero bells and whistles so what is actually good about this game so personally i think the pixel art is brilliant the sprites have a lot of emotion and some of the enemies look amazing it proves that the saturn was a 2d powerhouse the translation while i'm not sure how faithful it was has a lot of personality as i've said and this worked really well in keeping me interested and honestly it's kind of nice to play a like one of these traditional turn-based games every now and again as it's personally something i hadn't done in a while so if you're looking for it there's one right here but every plus is there's usually some negatives and well so well a problem comes from being simple and that is repetitiveness the battles get very repetitive towards the end and some of the last few bosses has a ton of hp so the same process is time and time again selecting the same abilities same spells same attack one boss practically took me 40 minutes and it wasn't even the final one before we dropped also the load times of the game are quite bad so that's why i said at the start play it on an emulator with speed up otherwise it is going to destroy us all so overall my final thoughts are that if you're after a solid classic title and you're bored with like the dragon quest and the final fantasies definitely give albert odyssey a go it's quite light-hearted and it's not too difficult it won't blow you away but you can still have a lot of fun with it so my rating is give it a go <laughs>